Let's code an Arduino simulator from scratch. We want this to run in the browser, so we'll use web technologies such as JavaScript and React, and we are going to build it on top of the AVR AJS library, which is an open source library that I created, and it simulates the microcontroller that you can find on Arduino boards. You will learn how to use this library and how to put all the pieces together to create a working Arduino simulator. And this is, by the way, the same technology that we use to power our playgrounds at walkwe.com. Let's start. In order to make this as simple as possible, we are going to use this online service called Code Sandbox that let us create development environment in the browser super quick. We are going to um, use React for this project. So I will just use the React template. And now once it's loaded, we have this environment where we can uh, write code here. So uh, that would be Arduino simulator. And as soon as we save, we can see the preview on the right side. And before we start writing the actual simulation code, let's start by adding some virtual hardware. And for that, we are going to use the WorkWe Elements library, which is an open source library that includes a bunch of hardware components, such as this uh, LED, and it has a bunch of other components like this uh, LCD screen, uh, a buzzer, and even a complete Arduino Uno board. But for starters, we'll just start with this LED. And if we go to the Docs tab, we can see the uh, code. It's just an HTML element called Woki LED. And by the way, this library is built using web components, so you can use it no matter which framework you use in your application, Angular, React, Vue, or just Vanilla.js, it will work. We are going to copy this code. Uh, we don't need the value and brightness, just the LED tag and the color. And before we can use it in our code, we should install Wokwe Elements. So let's do this, Wokwe Elements, adding it to the project. And then we need to import it, import. And since this is a web component, all we need to do is just to, to, to write this tag in our application. And as soon as I save, the app reloads and you will be able to see this LED. And now we are going to build an Arduino simulator and it's going to run some Arduino code. So we need some Arduino code to test the simulator with. So for that, I prepared a simple Arduino program that blinks the LED connected to pin number seven of the Arduino. Let me show you this in action on a real physical board. So here's my own Arduino Uno compatible board. So we'll plug a red LED to pin number seven and we can connect the other end of the LED using a cable and a resistor to pin number 13. Now let's just upload the code. It will take just a moment. And we can see the red LED blinking just as the code says. So this is the code that we are going to use for the simulation. Let's copy it and paste it in our code. So uh, Arduino code will be this. Let's also show it to the user. So I'm going to add a text area and give it the value of this Arduino code we just created. And for now, we'll also make it read only so we don't have to uh, worry about state for now. When we save, we can see it here. Let's just make it bigger. We will give it a width of 100%. So that would be styled with 100%. And also make it 20 rows long. Wow, that's so much better. And finally, I just noticed that I have a typo here. It should be Arduino and not Arduino. Yeah, that's better. And uh, I think the next step would be to add a run button that will let us run the simulation. So this would be the button. And then we'll add a click listener. So basically on click, uh, we'll uh, execute a method called run code. And this method is going to do the actual trick. So let's create it. Uh, run code equals a new function. And this function will need to take care of a few things. First of all, we'll need to compile the Arduino source code. And then we'll need to uh, set up the simulation and also attach the virtual hardware. And finally, we'll need to run the simulation. Let's start with compiling the Arduino source code. So basically we want to take the source code and translate it into a machine code that we can run inside the simulation. And we are going to do this by using a cloud service. Let me show you. So first of all, let's call uh, the fetch function to call the cloud service. I'm also going to hide this sidebar. 
so we have more space. And now we can call it, it's https hexi.walkwe.com slash build, and we need to give it a few parameters. So basically the request method is going to be post, and then the body of the request will contain the code that we want to translate as a JSON object. So that would be a sketch equals to this uh, Arduino code that we defined above here. And finally, we also need to add some headers to tell it that this is a JSON request. So content type would be application slash JSON. And I think that's it. Oh, we also want to make this function async and wait for the result of fetch because it's asynchronous. And now we can read the result. So uh, we get two variables called hacks and uh, stdr. There are a few more, but we don't care about them for now. And await result.json. And next we can add one more check. So if we didn't get a result, then we add an error. So let's just alert it and return. Otherwise, let me show you what this hex object contains. Let's save and then we can run the code once this reloads. I will open the console so we can see this debug print and click on run. The request is sent to the cloud server and you can see these long lines of hexadecimal numbers. Now this is a standard format that is using to program Arduino boards. It's called Intel Hex and it contains the program data as well as some checksum and more information. And instead of having to deal with this ourselves, we are actually going to use a third-party package that can parse this for us and just uh, extract the compiled code, bytecode out of it. Let's do that. Um, I will add this package, it's called uh, Intel Hex. It's installed, so I can remove this sidebar again. Now let's just import it. So I'm going to import the parse method from Intel hex and I can use it to parse this uh, hex that I just got. So const data equals parse hex and that would give me the list of bytes, the byte values of the compiled code. Let's save and then we can click run again, wait for the request to be sent and we got a bunch of numbers. Now these numbers actually represent the machine code that will be running on the real Arduino board or in our case on the simulation. Each two bytes are actually one instruction, one Arduino instruction. Um, and that's it. We are ready to set up the simulation. The first thing we need to do is to install another package. That's the AVR8JS library, the simulation library. So AVR8JS, let's install it. We got it. So we can close this sidebar again. And now we are going to start setting up the simulation. First of all, we want to import some stuff from it. So uh, I'm going to import the uh, CPU class. And the CPU is like the central part that takes care of storing all the state of the simulation. So that's the first object we are going to create. We are going to create a new CPU and we need to give it the program data. As you can see, it expects a UIN16 array and we don't have that yet. We just have a normal array with numbers. So we'll need to do some conversions first. First of all, let's convert this data into a uh, uh, let's call it just proc data, new uint8 array and give it the data. And then we'll do another conversion to turn it into a uint16 array. So that is uh, just pro converting the proc data and we need to take the buffer. For, so first of all, we converted this list of uh, integers into a byte array and then we just restructured it so each two bytes are now uh, one element of this uint16 array and if you are not really familiar with the differences between uint8 array and uint16 array um, you can read on that but basically what you need to know that these two lines make sure that the hex data that we read and converted is now loaded into this cpu into the program memory of the virtual processor and now we can start running the code. At a very basic sense, that would look something like uh, while true, and then I just execute the program instruction by instruction. So the AVR instruction function is part of the AVR AGS library, and it basically 
takes the next instruction from the program buffer that we passed in and then executes it. And we do this repeatedly. We basically run the um, instructions of the program forever. And that's how we execute a simulation. But if you are familiar with JavaScript, you probably know that this code will behave really bad. It's going to freeze the browser. Instead of running it in an endless loop, we are going to run the AVR instruction for a finite number of times, let's say uh, half a million. And then after each half a million uh, simulated instructions, we are going to yield control back to the browser. We can do it by calling await new promise and then give it a callback with set timeout. And this is one way to basically tell the browser, take back the control for a moment and then return to running this endless loop. This ensures that the browser won't freeze. There are other more efficient ways to do this, but what I like about this one is that it's one liner and it does the trick. So far we have compiled the code, we loaded it into the virtual microcontroller and then we run it instruction by instruction. So at this point we'll have the simulation running, but we will not see any output. In order to see something on the screen, we need to attach some virtual hardware. And what this essentially means is writing some code that will listen for all these digital write and uh, pin mode and this delay and will connect it with something that we have on the screen. And we can do it by defining some virtual hardware and attaching event listeners. So for instance, if we want to listen for this uh, pin number seven of the virtual hardware, we can create a new object. Uh, it's called uh, AVR IO port. So seven is one of the IO pins on the Arduino and we will attach this object to the CPU. And specifically pin number seven is part of a hardware piece called port D. So we are going to pass this to the AVR IO port constructor. Now these are some details that are very specific to the Arduino board and you can find them online like uh, which port each pin belongs to. And once we have this set up, we can add an event listener. So let's add a listener that will listen for any change in this port. So basically anytime the code writes uh, something to this uh, IO port, to one of these uh, pins. And then in order to find out whether to turn on the LED, we can check the state of uh, pin number seven. So that would be port.pin state seven. And we want to check if it is high. So it only turns on when this uh, digital write high is running, not when it's low. And let's console log it for now, uh, LED turn on. And there is one extra piece of virtual hardware that we need to attach in order for delay to work and that's the timer. So let's do that. So const timer new uh, AVR timer and we want to attach it to the CPU and delay works with timer zero. Again, that's like some of the Arduino library internals. Um, and we need to call the timer tick after running each instruction. And this timer is how the Arduino microcontroller keeps track of the time so it can know how long it should delay when it sees this delay command. And now with this IO port and this timer, the program that is running inside the simulation is able to communicate with the simulator and tell it to turn on and off the LED. And the last piece that we would need to add is to actually uh, wire it with React to this LED component. So let's do that. I'm going to add a React hook. Uh, let's call it LED state and then uh, set LED state equals React to state. Um, and it starts with false. And if you are not familiar with React hooks, it basically means that I will have a LED state variable and this function will allow me to change this value. And whenever I call set LED state, it will update this LED state value and it will also update the component state. So it's re-rendered to the screen. And now instead of just like console logging this LED, I can just call set LED state with uh, turn on. And let's also update the value of this walk we LED. So if it's uh, LED state, then true, otherwise an empty string. And the reason I need an empty string and not false is the way web components and React works. Long story short, true will turn it on and an empty string will turn it off. And I think that's it. Let's save and see if it finally works. I'm a bit excited. What about you? Let's click the run button and...
Oh my god, potential infinite loop. It seems like this uh, code sandbox is trying to protect us. So we need to edit this configuration file and disable some checks so it will actually let us run this code, this simulation code with this uh, very long loop. Let's create this file, uh, what it's called, sandbox config JSON, and disable the infinite loop protection. Disable. Disable. And back to our code, closing the sidebar. We are ready to try it again. Drum roll and run. It's compiling, I guess. And this is running. We got it to blink. So exciting. Hooray, we did it. We created a working Arduino simulator in just 15 minutes. Isn't that cool? In future videos, we'll take a deeper look into the AVR AJS library and learn how it works internally. You can find a link to the code we created today in the video description below. So feel free to tinker with it, add more LEDs, improve the editor, and let me know if you create anything cool with it. And until the next time, bye-bye.